Be more thankful for that. And we should ensure that we have something put aside for darker times. If anything goes wrong with this country, don't blame the government or the president. They don't truly care about you or your family. You'll be the only one in charge of your fate. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but nothing falls from the sky. God helps you, but He doesn't lay it on your table. You have to work hard and do things yourself. As long as you're aware of this, your destiny rests solely on you and your willpower. Now, you can truly change things, and you can do a lot more than you think you can. With this idea in mind, five years ago, I wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. Something that not only would help me survive a crisis without investing a fortune in stockpiles, but something that I could do around my house on a daily basis using only methods that were tested and proven by our forefathers for centuries. I wanted to unearth and learn the forgotten ways of our great-grandparents. I went to my grandfather to find out how he survived and to learn the little secrets that helped him stay alive in spite of almost everyone else dying. Now, he was almost 90 years old, but the old man was still in good shape. For three weeks on end, I absorbed his lessons like a dry sponge. And on top of that, we built a lot of things together, including a root cellar and a storm shelter, just like the folks did when he was young. We made lard and ham, and we smoked four turkeys and preserved them for winter in four different traditional ways, and a lot, lot more. Now, when I was a child, I was raised by my grandparents, but I hadn't spent much quality time with them until then. In fact, there were months when we barely even spoke, not because we couldn't stand each other, but only because I was always too busy working or taking care of my kids. A lame excuse and a thing that I deeply regretted later on in life. Well, my grandfather passed on a couple of years ago, and with him, a magnificent amount of survival knowledge. Now, I don't know if you're in a similar situation, but think about your grandfather and how many things he did or knew, things that will vanish forever into the dark abyss of ignorance. And because I deeply believed in lesson number three, that I was the only one who could change something, my goal for the last couple of years changed from not just learning, but saving our forefathers' ways. This is one of the most important things I've done in my life, and I'm proud of it, but it took me five difficult years. Now, first, there's no person that knows all our forefathers' forgotten secrets. Let's just say there are still a handful of people that still practice a lost skill transmitted from generation to generation, even today. But not all the skills, of course. I had to get in touch with a lot of people. Second, where do you find these guys? They are no mainstream survival experts. They don't have a website or a TV show. And some of them even live in remote areas with no internet or TV cable, earning a living like the pioneers did. Third, I wanted to do something unprecedented. You know, articles like 11 skills your great-grandparents had that you didn't, and they started listing the skills. Hunting, fishing, foraging, butchering, and so on. Well, you know, this kind of information will never help anyone. I needed something solid, exact, and to the point. Not just skills, I wanted to know things that they actually built, ate, and stored, and exactly how they did it. And fourth, I'm not sitting on a gold mine. As much as I enjoyed traveling and learning these skills, I still needed to go to work. But what I didn't realize when I started my quest is that you can't save these skills only by writing them down. If all these writings will be forgotten in a dusty drawer right next to my bed, it won't help anyone. This knowledge will die together with me, and all my efforts to save our forefathers' ways would have been in vain. So this is because all my life I blindly believed in lesson three, that it's always up to me. But I was wrong. In this case, it's only halfway there. It's also up to you. Today is your chance to be a part of saving our ancestors' lost ways. I wanted to make this information available to every family out there without having to spend years of their lives or thousands of dollars. So I came up with this great idea to edit all my manuscripts and turn all this lost knowledge into one of the greatest books of this century. The Lost Ways, Saving Our Forefathers' Skills. Now, as you can see, I designed and edited the book in an old-fashioned way. 
but most of it is not written by me personally because I didn't want people to read a second account. I'm sure a lot of information would have been lost in this process. You know, those little secrets that make a thing really work? Those little things that make a big difference. So I paid these experts for their time, and I got what I wanted. These people are not professional writers, but instead are uniquely special. They're neither the strong badass type that you see in Rambo movies, nor the ultra-rich preppers from reality shows. They're simple people who know a lost skill very, very well. They're smart, shrewd, and wise enough to survive for months or even years in the world's most remote places. Now, here's a glimpse of what you'll find in The Lost Ways. You'll discover the lost remedies used by our ancestors for centuries. And I'm not talking about rare and complicated insights that only a botanist knows. I'm talking about plants that grow in your backyard or around your house. Very common weeds. For example, this common driveway weed is one of nature's most powerful survival plants. It's not only edible, but it's super nutritious, easy to identify, has no poisonous look-alikes, and is used as medicine. Following the instructions from the Lost Ways, go ahead and use this underestimated or discredited plant and make yourself a powerful antimicrobial and cell regrowth bandage. Or simply make a tea with it that can be used for a wide range of digestive problems and toothaches. Native American Eric Bainbridge, who is on the board of directors of a Native American educational and took part in the reconstruction of the native village of Kualoklo in California, will show you how Native Americans build the subterranean roundhouse, an underground house that today will serve you as a storm shelter, a perfectly camouflaged hideout, or a bunker. It can easily shelter three to four families. So how will you feel if, when all hell breaks loose, you'll be able to call all your loved ones and offer them guidance and shelter? And besides that, the subterranean roundhouse makes an awesome root cellar where you can keep all your food and water reserves year-round. From Ruff Simmons, an Old West history expert and former deputy, you'll learn the techniques and methods used by the wise sheriffs from the frontiers to defend an entire village despite being outnumbered and outgunned by gangs of robbers and bandits, and how you can use their wisdom to defend your home against looters when you'll be surrounded. Patrick Shelley, who earned a living in the woods for years on end, will show you how to make foolproof traps. He wrote an awesome chapter about how to trap different animals in winter just like our forefathers. When 100 hungry mouths will shoot each other over the last deer to feed their children, your family can eat the favorite food of trappers and mountain men from the 1800s. From Shannon Azares, you'll learn how sailors from the 18th century preserved water in their ships for months on end, even years, and how you can use this method to preserve water for your family cost-free. Mike Searson, who is a firearm and Old West history expert, will show you what to do when there's no more ammo to be had how people who wandered the West managed to hunt eight deer with six bullets, and why their supply of ammo never ran out. Remember the panic buying in the first half of 2013? Well, that was nothing compared to what's going to precede the collapse. From Susan Morrow, an ex-science teacher and chemist, you'll master the art of poultice. She says, if you really explore the ingredients from which our forefathers made poultices, you'll be totally surprised by the similarities with modern medicine. Well, how would you feel in a crisis to be the only one from the group knowledgeable about this lost skill? When there are no more antibiotics, people will turn to you to save their children's lives. If you liked our video tutorial on how to make pemmican, then you'll love this. I'll show you how to make another superfood that our troops were using in the Revolutionary War, which even George Washington ate on several occasions. This food never goes bad, and I'm not talking about honey or vinegar. I'm talking about real food. And the awesome part is that you can make this food in just 10 minutes, and I'm pretty sure that you already have the ingredients in your house right now. Now, really, this is all just a peek. The Lost Ways is a far-reaching book with chapters ranging from simple things like making tasty bark bread, like people did when there was no food, to building a traditional backyard smokehouse, and many, many, many more. And believe it or not, this isn't all. If you get the lost ways right now,
you'll also receive three exclusive reports that will be off the table soon. There's an old saying that our great-grandparents used to know. Once in life, you need a doctor, a lawyer, a policeman, and a preacher. But every day, three times a day, you need a farmer. So the first report you'll get is what every survivalist should grow in his backyard. This special report contains the most nutritious and toughest plants that you should start growing so you'll never run out of food. These plants are reliable in the worst possible conditions, including drought, flooding, or light deprivation. And you'll also find instructions on how to plant, grow, harvest, and store them. I'm also pretty sure that you're familiar with this 150-year-old saying that it's not the strongest species that survived, nor the most intelligent, but the ones most responsive to change. So, the second bonus you'll get is how to outlive an EMP, the Early Pioneer Way, which is a day-by-day -day guide that shows you what to do after an EMP, every day, for 30 days, using the Lost Ways. Think about it this way. If an EMP had struck in the late 1800s, nobody would have noticed it. Our great-grandparents didn't even know what an EMP was, nor did they know what modern technology was. But they surely lived, survived, and prospered without it. Now things are a little bit different, and because this event can happen all of a sudden with no warning whatsoever, it might be difficult for even the smartest minds to know what to do from the moment the running water stops and your food spoils to the moment when looters come knocking at your door. So, in this report, you'll learn the 10 things that you should do